Right, so we start now again. We already finished discussing carbohydrates in milk. Lipids in milk, the main carbohydrate is lactose, we already know, but there are also several minor carbohydrates as well occurring in milk. And then in the lipids, we talk about like uh, neutral lipid and polylipid. Neutral lipids occur in the gall of the fat globules. Polylipids are distributed on the MFGM, on the fat globule membranes. And then we also talk about the fatty acids composition, the lipid rancidity, fat rancidity. And then we also talk about melting range of fat in general and of milk fat in comparison with other fat as well. So now we go to the third group of components in milk, which is proteins. Proteins, protein molecule is a polymer of amino acids we already know. This figure we already saw before. Now we have the fat globules in milk. The fat globule is surrounded by a membrane. We call it MFGM, milk fat globule membrane. And then now we see the particles. These particles belong to casein micelles. Casein is the main milk protein, cow milk protein. And in milk, caseins are not soluble, but they form micelles. So they form particles. And the maximum size is 0 0.4 micrometer, we already know. And then when we take the fat lobule out when we take the casein micelles out and then the remaining is called serum the serum and in this we have also a group of protein these are soluble protein and the soluble proteins in meals they are whey proteins you call them whey protein so just by looking at this image we see that milk have generally three groups of proteins. Casein is the main one, whey protein is the second group, and there is a minor group, a small group, which is the protein in the MFGM. And most of these proteins are glycoprotein. We already uh, mentioned this a bit in previous part. Okay, so now we look at the list of proteins again. Proteins in milk, we have three groups, casein, whey proteins, and MFGM proteins. Casein proteins belong to the main, uh, the main group, and they occupy around 80% of total proteins in milk. So casein, 80%. Casein includes alpha S1, alpha S2, beta, and kappa. Means that there are four different species of casein. And the second group is whey protein. These are soluble in the serum. And this consists what? Alpha lactan booming, beta lactoglobulin, BSA, blood serum and booming, immunoglobulins. And then other minor proteins. The total weight proteins around 20%, almost 20%. The third group, the minor group, the proteins in the fat globule membrane, more or less 1% only. Okay, so again, these are the four species of casein, but sometimes you may see the other name like gamma. Casein. Okay. What is gamma casein? This is actually from beta casein. When beta casein is limited hydrolyte, when this protein is cut a little bit, then we call it gamma casein. Okay. And this S1, S2 together we call alpha S proteins. Right. And I think we already discussed in chapter 2, we know that casein is actually 
difficult for digestion. They are kind of tolerant to heat. They are not denatured easily. The whey protein are sensitive to heat, I mean they are denatured by heat, but they are easier for digestion, it means that they have higher nutritional value. So in cow milk, 80% belong to casein, but then in human milk, this one is less than 50%. This whey is higher than 50%. This is the main difference between cow milk and human milk in composition. But now, of course, we are talking about cow meal. Okay, so we just look at characteristics of different groups. The first one is casein. This is the group name of four species. And then they are heat stable. When we pasteurize the milk, they are not denatured. They do not precipitate normally. In milk, casein are not soluble, but they are present as micelles. Okay, they are present as micelles. One micelle consists of hundreds to thousands of individual molecules. So many molecules, they come together. And casein micelle can be at large as 0.4 micrometers or 400 nanometers. At this size, we can only observe using an electron microscope not an optical an optical microscope then you you can use it to to look at what mold yeast even bacteria but for this size then we have to use electron microscope to see it okay so now we look at the structure of a case in my cells if you look this image show a case in my cells and different Globules, this kind of spherical image here. Then each one of these represent one sub micelle. So this is not this is not a molecule yet. Eh? It's a sub micelle. It's also a hundred molecules together. So when we look at this, the first question is, or the first important point we should know is what you see the the hair here. These hairs are actually part of kappa casein. So what do we have? We have what? Alpha casein, we have beta casein, and kappa casein. But the third point here is, we need to know, kappa casein is distributed more on the surface of the micelle. Right. Outside, surrounding here, what is that? How do you call it? Serum. Serum is actually what aqueous environment is water, a lot of water. So what does that mean? So casein, kappa casein is on the surface, mean kappa casein is hydrophilic. Part, this part. This part of the molecules is hydrophilic. They love water. That is why they can stay on the surface in contact with water. Why alpha? and then beta casein are more hydrophobic mean they don't like water and they stay rather inside of the micelle not on the surface this is the first point we should know this is the second point we should know is that what then what then the linkages that stabilize the structure of the micelle why the micelle do not disintegrate into different smaller pieces why they can come together first because of the calcium phosphate we call it calcium phosphate bridges so this one this one they represent the link the molecule of calcium phosphate so they link the sub micelle together and then the second interaction that have to protect the integrity of the micelle is the hydrophobic interaction. We call this hydrophobic interaction. What does that mean? It means that you see these sub micelles. The sub micelle inside the large micelle is actually hydrophobic. 
They are hydrophobic when they don't want to have a contact with water. So they come together, they come together to reduce the contact with water, right? And then they cover by the hydrophilic submicell. The hydrophobic submicells are inside because they don't want to have a contact with water. And this is important that the submicells stay together. Okay, again. So, the third point, what is the third point? It's a the distribution of casein species within the micelle is not homogeneous. Kappa casein is more on the surface because part of the molecule is hydrophilic. Alpha and beta casein are more inside, mean they are more hydrophobic. The second point, the important linkages that help to, pre to protect the integrity of the micelle will include what? Cancer phosphate bridges and hydrophobic interaction. This is a sub -micelle. The text is here. You can read. You can look at the handout and read. Important points I already explained. We go to the second group of protein whey protein these are soluble in the serum and these are the major nitrogen compounds remaining in milk after coagulation of casein by acid or by rennet what does this sentence mean it means that when we make yogurt for example we precipitate or we coagulate casein to form a network to form a gel or in making cheese, we also coagulate casein to make, uh, to have the curve for, for cheese. We will study this more in, in chapter 6, okay? But here we just know a little bit like that. So we know that when we reduce pH to 4.6, or when we use an enzyme in making cheese, the casein will coagulate, but whey protein will not coagulate and then whey protein represent around 20 percent almost 20 percent we already know in the total proteins whey protein are characterized with a well-defined tertiary structure three-dimensional structure and they are heat lay by mean they are not uh, tolerant or resistant to heat they are sensitive to heat they have high nutritional value this and then the two main ones and these they, they are globular proteins proteins when they are soluble normally they are in globular form or, or shape that means the tertiary structure the two major ones the two major proteins in whey groups and the whey proteins groups are alpha lactobumin and beta lactoglobulin these are the two main whey protein. Alpha lactobumin occupies 20%, beta lactoglobulin then represents 50% of the total whey protein. And these are typical, we call this typical whey protein. When you see the word typical whey protein, it means that these are synthesized in secretory cells. So these are synthesized in the secretory cells in memory glands. So these are not the ones that come from the blood. For example, bovine serum albumin. This protein is actually come to me from the blood. But these two are typical ones. The one to me that are synthesized there in the memory gland. Okay. Whey proteins are not coagulated, are not precipitated at pi values. For casein, when you reduce the pH to the pi to 4.6, when the pH is 4.6, then casein will precipitate. But whey protein do not precipitate at pi value when when they are not denatured by heat. So when they are still native, when they are not denatured, then they are not precipitated. But when we heat them, when they are denatured, then they may 
precipitate. Okay. If you study in food chemistry, you know that at pi value of a protein, the solubility will be minimum. The solubility is minimum means that they tend to precipitate. Okay. But for whey protein, they are not. When we heat the milk, when milk is heated, then some of the whey proteins will be needed. We already know because they are sensitive to heat. And when they denate, they may form complexes with casein. Tức là tạo phức với casein. Then when they form complexes with casein, then the casein become difficult for the enzyme rennet to do hydrolysis in making cheese. This sentence means that in making cheese, if we heat the milk a lot, Whey protein will denate and form complexes with casein, and then it becomes difficult for the enzyme to hydrolyze a part of casein to coagulate the casein. It's difficult. That's in making cheese, especially like ripened cheese, we will see in chapter 6 and chapter 7, then they normally do not really heat milk a lot. But we just explain a little bit here. So you can understand this sentence. From the previous slide, we already know that this is a case in my cell. The kappa casein, part of kappa casein is on the surface. In making cheese, enzyme rennet will cut this part away. The enzyme rennet will remove this hydrophilic part. And then the remaining of the micelle become hydrophobic then they don't love water anymore they don't want to get associated with water so they come together many myself they will come together to reduce the contact surface with water and when they come together they will expel the water the water will get out and this is actually coagulation precipitation in making cheese okay so here again when we heat the milk the whey protein may get denated and they form complexes somewhere here we will see in chapter 6 and then or we we'll see in some next slide i think then it's become more difficult for the enzyme to hydrolyze to coagulate the casein this is just a repeat. Whey proteins in general, especially anphalastanbumin in particular, have very high nutritional value. The amino acid composition is very close to what we call it a biological optimum. So a protein, the, the nutritional value of protein depends on what? Depends on the number of essential amino acids that they have. Not only the number, but also the ratio among these essential, the proportion among these essential amino acids should be optimal. So whey protein normally have high nutritional value. Kind of biological optimum means it's already the best. Okay. So in dairy industry, whey protein derivative are widely used as an ingredient in making other food products. Okay, so we just look at some candidate of whey protein. The first one, anphalastanbumin. This is a typical milk protein. This is not from the blood. And this occupies 20% of the total whey proteins. Okay, and then it is present in milk from all mammals. This one has high nutritional value that we already said. This also play an important role in the synthesis of lactose in the mammary gland. Lactose is also a typical milk component as well. Okay, and then the second one, beta-lactoglobulin. This one occupies 50% of the total whey protein to the second main whey protein. Whey proteins are sensitive to heat, especially beta-lactoglobulin. They may get denated when we heat the milk above 60 degrees C. 
and then when this protein is denated, they may form complexes, we already said, with casein, especially with kappa casein. They may form sulfur bridges with kappa casein, or with, with its cell, or with anphalastan booming. Okay, we will see the image in the next slide. When we cook milk at high temperature as well, the sulfurous compounds, because this protein contains thio group, means contain the sulfur atom in the molecules. So when we cook milk, the protein is denated, is unfolded, and then some sulfurous compound will be released, and this is responsible for the cook flavor of heat-treated milk. We heat the milk, the milk tastes like some cook flavor. This is actually from the sulfurous compound which is released by the denator of whey proteins. Okay, so this one will explain further the denaturation of whey protein. This image shows the native form. The native means without heat treatment. This one is just the submicell on the surface, okay? We already know on the surface this is a submicell with kappa casein with hydrophilic part of kappa casein. But when we heat, this is after heating, the whey proteins, especially beta lactoglobulin here, they will get denated and they get unfolded. Unfolded means like the tertiary structure, the globular shape now is unfolded and become like this. And this group is now released, you see. And then they may form complexes with this part of the kappa casein. And if they zoom in, this is what you see. We call it sulfur bridges. Some books say the sulfur bridges. D means the two atoms of sulfur here. Alright, and then from the text, in the previous slide, they also said what? The beta-lactoglobulin form complexes with GABA casein, but also with itself, with another beta-lactoglobulin, or can form complexes with alpha-lastan booming. Okay, this is alpha-lastan booming. This is beta-lactoglobulin. Okay, so upon heating, the whey protein are denator and they form different interactions like that. In making cheese, again, I explained a little bit in the previous slide that the that the enzyme branna should cut this part. And now, if you see like this, so it's difficult for the enzyme to cut. Okay, so now we go to another also quite well known protein in the whey proteins group bovine serum albumin. Uh, sometimes they use the name blood serum albumin. It's the same. And this one is a leakage protein. Means that it's not a typical one. It's not synthesized in secretary cell, but it is in milk from blood. Uh, this is a major protein of blood plasma. It's coming to me. Immunoglobulins also occur in in milk and in the lipid part we already know that immunoglobulin has another name agglutinin they call it also agglutinin because it will bite the fat globule to each other and this will call the agglutination of fat globule is uh, so the creaming become very fat Immunoglobulins are what uh, immunity proteins. They are antibodies like hantel. They are synthesized in response to stimulation by macromolecule antigens, like hantel, foreign to the animal. Okay, so animal body will produce more immunoglobulins when the body already detects that there is some attack of antigen. So these are actually a component of immunity system. Bovine colostrum, milk of the first several days is called colostrum, contain a lot of immunoglobulin, a hundred gram. 
per liter means like 10% already of milk is immunoglobulin. And this colostrum is very essential for the baby to take because it provides the immunity. And then when it's become normal milk, the content of immunoglobulin becomes very slow. It's less than a one gram. Less than one gram per liter. In colostrum, there's a lot of immunoglobulin to provide the immunity to the infant. Then in normal milk, it drops to a quite very low content. The primary function of immunoglobulin is what? To provide passive immunity. Passive means it, is, it doesn't build by itself, but it takes from the mother. Called passive immunity for the neonate, means the infant. There are five principal classes of immunoglobulin, and the main one is immunoglobulin G, and uh, there are also other four different. And in milk, immunoglobulin causes agglutination of fat globules. That's why we have this name, as we already mentioned. Whey proteins also consist of the minor proteins as well. They occur at small concentration like lactoferrin, like lactoperoxidase. Lactoferrin is a protein that carry, uh, ferrin, carries iron. And then this protein have antimicrobial property. Lactoperoxidase is actually an enzyme. And this protein is also have antimicrobial property. They may protect milk for a while. Now we go to the third group of proteins, the minor group, proteins of MFGM. This one have a specific composition. They consist many glycoproteins as we already know and the well-known one is mucin 1 the molecule has a lot of carbohydrate groups mfgm proteins occupies a very small fraction of milk protein in the table in the previous slide like 1.2 percent of total proteins however they have several positive properties to help Okay. They were several good. How beneficial property means good for health. So normally the component which occur a small amount normally have a good property because normally we don't have enough. Yes, so we already done with proteins. Before we go further to the next part, I think I should review by asking questions and then you answer.